An older couple, who were both widowed, had been going out with each other for a long time. Urged on by their friends, they decided it was finally time to get married. Before the wedding, they went out to dinner and had a long conversation regarding how their marriage might work. They discussed finances, living arrangements, and so on. Finally, the old gentleman decided it was time to broach the subject of their physical relationship. How do you feel about it? He asked, rather tentatively. I would like it infrequently, she replied. The old gentleman sat quietly for a moment, adjusted his glasses, then leaned over towards her and whispered, Is that one word or two? John asks his wife, Mary, what she wants to celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary. Would you like a new mink coat? He asks. Not really, says Mary. Well, how about a new Mercedes sports car? Says John. No, she responds. What about a new vacation home in the country? He suggests. She again rejects his offer with a no thanks. Frustrated, he finally asks, Well, what would you like for your anniversary? John, I'd like a divorce, answers Mary. John thinks for a moment and replies, Sorry, dear, I wasn't planning to spend that much. A guy and a girl come to his place after a date. He takes out his keys, and the girl tells him, You know, I watch how a man opens the door and determine whether we are suitable for each other. If he rudely sticks the key in the door, he's a rough lover, and he's not for me. And if he drops the keys and can't find the keyhole, he's an inexperienced lover, and he's also not for me. So how do you open the door, darling? The guy responds, Well, first I lick the keyhole. Lola comes back from a contest with a silver medal. Johnny and Robert ask her, Tell us, why did you get second place? Lola replies, I met a French woman in the finals. She was lying down, I was lying down. She was standing, I was standing. She was bent over, I was bent over. She did it orally, but I couldn't. Johnny and Robert thought that it wasn't right and that they needed to train. The following year, Lola returns with a gold medal and a medal for originality. Johnny and Robert ask her to tell the story. Lola says, I faced the same French woman in the finals again. She was lying down. I was lying down. She was standing. I was standing. She was bent over. I was bent over. She did it orally. And I did two at once while whistling. God descends from heaven to Adam and Eve and says, I have two talents that I want to bestow upon you. Let each of you choose one. The first talent, to urinate standing up. Adam starts whining and says, God, I've dreamed all my life of urinating standing up. I want this so much. Please give me this opportunity. I don't need anything else. God says, well, if Eve doesn't mind, take it. And God rewarded Adam with this ability. Adam ran around the Garden of Eden, urinating on the flowers, birds, butterflies, and everywhere he could reach. God and Evie are standing watching all this, and God says, The second talent is intelligence. Sorry, Eve, but we'll have to give this talent to Adam too. Otherwise, he'll pee all over our Garden of Eden. The situation in a pharmacy. A man asks the pharmacist, Please give me one condom. The pharmacist asks, Just one? The man replies, Yes, I'm going to my girlfriend's for dinner tonight. After thinking a bit, he says, Although her sister is also nice, give me two. After thinking some more, he says, Actually, her mom is not bad either. Give me three. In the evening, he goes to his girlfriend's, spends the entire dinner red as a tomato, and doesn't say a word. After dinner, they go to the girlfriend's room. The girlfriend asks, What's wrong with you tonight? You've been silent all evening. Did something happen? The guy replies, No, I just didn't know that your dad works as a pharmacist. A married couple was on holiday in Pakistan. They were touring around the marketplace looking at the goods and such when they passed a small sandal shop. 
From the inside, they heed a Pakistani accent say, You foreigners, come in. Come in my humble shop. So the married couple walked in. The Pakistani man said to them, I have some special sandals I think you'd be interested in. They make you wild and f***s like a great dessert camel. Well, the wife was really interested in buying the sandals after what the man had claimed, but her husband felt he really didn't need them, being as was he. The husband, how could sandals make you into a freak? The Pakistani man replied, Why don't you see for yourself? Well, the husband, after much badgering from his wife, finally conceded to try them on. As soon as he slipped then onto this feet, he got this wild look in his eyes, something his wife hadn't seen in years. Raw power. In a blink of an eye, the husband rushed of two. The Pakistani man threw him on the table and started tearing at the guy's pants. All the time, the Pakistani man was screaming, You have them on the wrong feet. You have them on the wrong feet. A circus came to a provincial town. At the end of the show, they bring out a stand, put a walnut on it, and to the sounds of a march, a handsome man comes out and smashes the walnut to pieces with his pee. There's thunderous applause. Twenty years go by. The circus comes back to the town. At the end of the show, they bring out a stand and put a coconut on it. To the sounds of a march, a slightly older, handsome man comes out and smashes the coconut with his There's thunderous applause turning into ovation, cries of bravo, encore. A local newspaper correspondent interviews him. We remember you from 20 years ago. The nut was a walnut then, and now it's a coconut. Tell us, what's the secret? There's no secret at all. I'm just getting older. My eyesight is failing. The young bride approached her awaiting husband on their wedding night and demanded $20 for their first lovemaking encounter. In his highly aroused state, he readily agreed. This scenario was repeated each time they made love for the next 30 years, him thinking it was a cute way for her to buy new clothes, etc. Arriving home around noon one day, she found her husband in a very drunken state. Over the next few minutes, she heard of the ravages of financial ruin caused by corporate downsizing and its effects on a 50-year-old executive. Calmly, she handed him a bank book showing deposits and interest for 12 years totaling nearly $1 million. Pointing across the parking lot, she gestured toward the local bank while handing him stock certificates worth nearly $2 million and informing him that he was the largest stockholder in the bank. She told him that for 30 years she had charged him each time they had s and this was the result of her investments. By now he was distraught and beating his heat against the side of the car. She asked him why the disappointment at such good news, and he replied, If I had known what you were doing, I would have given you all of my business. A wife says to her husband, who is looking for a secretary for work, Don't even think about hiring some young and girl. Hire a married one, older, preferably overweight, so she doesn't even excite you in your thoughts. No problem, dear. Can you start on Monday? A mute person comes to the pharmacy to buy c He waits until the queue subsides, people disperse, approaches the window, looks inside, and sees a male seller. Not particularly embarrassed, the mute guy takes out his p puts it through the window, lays it next to the cash register, and puts the money next to the p He starts to gesture and tries to explain that in exchange for the money he wants, c for the p lying next to it. The male pharmacist looks at all this and without much thought takes out his own piece next to the mute guy's Both of them notice that the pharmacist's much larger than the mute guy's. After that, the pharmacist takes all the money that the mute guy laid out and says to him, If you're not sure, don't play. A man goes to his mistress, and they start making love. Suddenly, there's a knock on the door. It's my husband, the woman exclaims. 
jump out the window. He jumps. It's raining outside. A group of athletes runs by. The man joins them and runs along. One of them asks, Do you always run naked? Always. And with a con- No, only when it's raining. A young newlywed couple wanted to join a church. The pastor told them, We have special requirements for new parishioners. You must abstain from having sex for two weeks. The couple agreed and came back at the end of two weeks. The pastor asked them, Well, were you able to get through the two weeks without being intimate? Pastor, I'm afraid we were not able to go without two weeks, the young man replied. What happened? inquired the pastor. My wife was reaching for a can of corn on the top shelf and dropped it. When she bent over to pick it up, I was overcome with lust and took advantage of her right there. You understand, of course, that this means you will not be welcome in our church, stated the pastor. That's okay, said the young man. We're not welcome at the grocery store anymore either. A bank robber wanted to keep his identity secret, but didn't wear a balaclava. He told all in the bank not to look at him or he would shoot them. One foolhardy customer sneaked a look and the robber promptly shot him. The robber asked if anyone else had seen his face. One customer, gazing intently at the ground, said, I think my wife got a glimpse. Johnny comes home from school and asks his mom what is a period. His mom says that a period is when a woman needs to release her dead egg cells. Johnny asks what color is it. She says it's red. Johnny said, I have one of those, but mine is white and it makes babies. One day, a farmer wakes up to go check on his cheese cow. He walks up and finds her dead in the grass. The man is so upset he kills himself. Then his wife wakes up. She finds her husband dead and goes to the lake and kills herself. Next, the first son wakes up and notices everybody is dead. He goes down to the river and sees a mermaid. She swims up to him and says, Having a bad day, huh? I'll tell you what. If you make love to me ten times in a row without stopping, I'll bring everyone back to life. But if you don't, I will kill you. He tries to do it, but doesn't make it. She kills him. Then the second son wakes up, and after seeing his dead parents, also goes to the river where he sees his dead brother. The same mermaid swims up and tells him what she told his brother. He asks, if I make love to you twenty times, what will you do? She tells him, if you are able to perform twenty times in a row, I will bring everyone back and make you the richest man alive. He then asks, well, if I do it twenty times in a row, what's stopping you from dying? That's what happened to the cow. A young man is walking his date home after their meeting. They reach the porch of her house, and the guy, leaning one hand on the door frame, suddenly says, Mary, please, give me a b b Are you crazy? On the doorstep of the house? What if the neighbors see? To hell with the neighbors. Just one b Mary? No, not now. Maybe tomorrow. Mary, just one quick suck. I know. You like it. No, no and no. I won't do it now. Please, Mary, just suck a little. You've done it so many times for me and my friends. Get away from me, and so on. At that moment, the door opens, and the girl's sleepy, disheveled younger sister appears on the doorstep of the house and says, Good evening. Dad said that either I should give you a or my sister and I should give you a or you should do it yourself, or Dad will come down and you'll give him a but for God's sake, get your hand off the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.